Some of y'all need to get a grip, like 15 of you specifically, because that's how many we're making. Today we're gonna to be finishing our custom Tides of CNC double stack 1911 grip for Paradigm Arms. Now guys, we're only making 15 of these and you could be one of the 15 that owns one of these. But we're gonna talk more about that later. We're gonna finish it out on the five axis, then get it over to the EDM. But first, we gotta make a fixture to hold it. All right guys, so just like in our last video, I'm gonna go through step by step of what we're gonna do in this operation. You see the fixture that we've made. We're gonna come in, bolt through the bottom, and then we're gonna use this outside and this hole to locate off of. So we're gonna be left with this where it's standing up in our vise. Now, if we take a look at this model, the stock model, this is basically what we've got to deal with. So we've got the bulk of the material out, but we still need to get rid of the rest of it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is come in with a 3 8 end mill, and I'm going to rest rough that material away. Now I'm not gonna get very aggressive with this because like I said, we're only using that one bolt on the bottom and it gets pretty thin up here at the top. So the walls get pretty thin. So the last thing I wanna do is start flexing this part or start you know, roughing it so hard that I'm, I'm pushing it away and I don't want to damage the part. So we're going to get a little bit conservative with our feeds and speeds and step over on this. So once I've roughed that material away, we're going to come up and semi finish this floor here. So after that, I'm going to come in with a smaller tool and rough out this where the trigger bow goes. So it's a little slot there for the trigger bow. Now I'm only taking it down to this floor right here. I'm going to save this inside where it breaks out into the rest of this uh, for a later time because I want to pre-drill that out first. And I don't want my drill to have any interruptions. So what we're going to be left with is something like this. So you can see the bulk of the material has been taken out all on the inside. And we've got this slot taken care of down to that floor. So after that, I wanna start the work on my holes. So I'm gonna come in with that same tool that I did the trigger bow with, and I'm gonna just helical mill this, this hole out. There's no sense in really drilling it at this point because it's so thin. Uh, then I'm gonna step down here and where the mag release pin goes, I'm not going to helical bore all the way down yet. I'm gonna drill that out to get the bulk of that material out, but I do need a flat for my drill to start. So I'm gonna come in and just helical bore a flat. Then I can come in on the other side and do the same thing. Then I'll be able to come in with a drill. So I'm gonna utilize that same drill that we used on the op one and pre-drill these holes. Now it's not really long enough to go all the way through. So for this hole, I'm gonna drill it from both sides. All right, so once we do that hole, then it's gonna come over to the little hole in front of the trigger guard and go ahead and pre-drill that one as well. So after that, we can start our finishing process. Now, I'm gonna finish this inside pocket first. You'll see it does the floor and then it come up, do these walls above these two bosses. Now for this inside pocket to finish these walls, I'm getting very conservative with it. As you see, I'm only stepping down maybe a hundred thousandths at a time. Actually, let's just open that up and see to be certain. Yeah, so I'm stepping down a hundred thousandths. And that's because these walls are getting so thin that I really don't need it to chatter and I need to hold a very consistent size. Because the main thing that's important on this operation is the distance between these two pads. So that's where the frame is going to sit down and locate on this grip is these two pads, so I need to make sure that that distance is held to a very tight tolerance. So once we do that, then that same tool is gonna to step up and do the finish pass on this top floor. Now notice that I'm using the same tool that does this top floor as well as the inside, because I want these two floors to be married with each other. And then we'll also rotate down and machine this inside wall right here. So essentially what you can tell here is I'm, I'm machining as much as I can with that 3 8 end mill. So I come back with my grooving tool and I have very minimal to take out or at least 
only what's necessary. And then I'm gonna come back at the top here and I'm going to do another final pass at the top just to make sure that there's no springing involved. Because like I said, these walls are getting very thin. So the next tool that's gonna come in is an eighth inch end mill and it's gonna come in and do this slot right here. So the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna come back up here like I just talked about and get rid of this excess stock on this outside. And then I'm gonna start finishing our holes. So I'm gonna come in and circle mill that hole here in the counter bore, as well as the counter bore and through hole on the trigger side or the trigger guard side. And I'm gonna come in with that same tool and now I'm gonna rough a little bit deeper on this uh, mag release hole, as well as do the contour for this little shape. I don't know what you call that shape, but it's gonna come in and rough that out. So after that's done, we're gonna come in with that larger tool and helical bore out our mag release hole. You probably can notice here that I've got a, a flat bottom in the bottom of this. So that's why we're not just drilling it all the way through or boring it all the way through. There's an actual a flat bottom down there. All right, so next we're going to step up and rough the rest of this slot down to the bottom here for our trigger, and then we'll come back in and finish it. So I'm gonna finish the walls, and then I'm gonna come back in with that same tool and spiral back down through this mag release hole to make sure there's no burrs. It might take a little bit of extra cycle time, but when you're doing parts like this, it's a lot more time ahead just to go ahead and add a, another pass to get rid of any burrs or anything like that than it is to do a whole lot of post-processing on, on your part. All right, so next we'll come back in with that eighth inch end mill and finish out this slot here. And then we'll come in with our grooving tool and make our groove for our little boss like we've seen on this piece. So after that, we're gonna come in with our horn grooving tool and start grooving out this bottom piece here and the back side of this pad like we've seen earlier for our trigger. All right, so the very last tool path that's gonna run is we look down inside of here and you'll see that the slot for the trigger bow actually goes down inside here and there's this little flat that we can't really reach any other way other than a key cutter. So I'm gonna come in with a 5 8 diameter key cutter and take care of that little remaining stock that's left. You can see this is what it looks like. So we need to get rid of that stock there. So our trigger bow can actually sit forward as it needs to. So after that last keyway cutter runs, this program will be complete and all of our operations on the five axis is done. The only thing remaining to do is to get it over to Trevor on the EDM so he can EDM the mag hole. And after that, this part is complete. So like I said earlier in the video, you can actually purchase this grip. If you go to ParadigmeArms.com and check out the Alpha One, that is what this grip is going to. So this is a limited series that we're making for Paradigm Arms. And when you order one, you get not only a carrying case, but it will have your name inscribed on a little plate and it will say what number you have, one of 15, two of 15, and so forth. But there's only gonna be 15 made, and I know some of them are already sold, so check it out before they're all gone. Now that Jussie's done machining the second op of the grip, the last step is to throw it in our AL600P and wire out the mag well. So let's get set up. In this video, we covered our retractable Renishaw probe in depth. And we talked about how it gives us the ability to pick up on features that we can't using our wire. And this is a good example of that. We already picked up on the hole in our fixture with our wire, but now we're gonna take our probe and use it to get a reference measurement on the inside of our grip so that we can verify our Y location is correct. While our EDM runs, let me show you guys how I program the magwell in SolidCam. So if we go into a sectional view, the first thing you'll notice is that the walls of our magwell are actually sitting at an angle. So we're gonna use a four axis toolpath to create this feature. We've also got 
features going through the faces of our magwell that would make it difficult to use these surfaces to create our toolpath. One thing that's also important with the four axis toolpath is we need to create a top plane and bottom plane for our angle. And we've got this angled surface right here. And then at the bottom, we've got these angled surfaces to deal with. So that can make it difficult for us to find a bottom and top plane. So what I did to alleviate all these issues is I created a lofted surface that isolates our magwell, but it also gives us a nice flat surface at the top at the highest point of our magwell pocket and it extends the pocket all the way down to the bottom of our grip which will be at our table height so we can call the bottom plane zero because it's going to sit right at our table height and then the top plane of our four axis tool path will be this point right here which is the highest point of our magwell pocket and now all we really need to do is select how many passes we want in our technology and then our program is pretty much done. We can go ahead and save and calculate, and then we're gonna be able to simulate our program and see how it looks. As you can see, our start point is right here. Our wire is gonna thread through our entry point, no problem. And as far as our toolpath goes, it looks like it's following the surfaces exactly the way we want. So let's jump into the simulation and see how it looks. So you can see that custom nozzle position gets our nozzle up out of this pocket so it's not colliding with these walls. And let's run it. And that looks really good. We're just barely gonna be missing these surfaces right here. These are about a thousand two tenths underneath where our mag wall ends. And so now that everything looks good, let's get back out to the EDM and finish this thing off. All right, so I just got these from the EDM and technically they're finished but I'm gonna go ahead and tumble them in ceramic to get rid of the feed lines and get rid of some of these burrs left behind from all the sharp corners. So like I said in the previous video, it looks a lot cleaner when everything is sharp, but to get rid of those burrs, we're just gonna tumble them real quick. All right, we've had this in here for a couple hours now. I think that's gonna be plenty good to get rid of the burrs and the feed lines. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clean them off. So guys, this is gonna be the last step we take in this because these parts are gonna get anodized. So there's no real need into doing anything else after we got the burrs off of them. So I actually made a couple show pieces just to have around the shop. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take this, clean it off, and I'm gonna change our media out to walnut shell. Now, typically you're not gonna do walnut shell because there's no sense in shining it up when it's just gonna get bead blasted and then hard anodized. But we're gonna do that just for a couple show pieces to make it nice and beautiful. All right, so it's been a couple hours now, so we're gonna go ahead and take this out and see what it looks like. All right, so that is it complete. Now it's got a little film on here from the walnut shell, so we're gonna go get it washed off and uh, get them sent out to James so he can get it built out. So make sure you check that out with the Titans Alpha One at ParadigmeArms.com. Yeah. Behold me and all my glory. Greatness right here.